insubordination is something that can cripple the best managers. And you cannot just say, because I said so. And I know that's what you want to say. That's what I want to say. But we got to go a little bit deeper. And in this video, that's what we're doing. Welcome to the channel, Leadership with Mike. On this channel, I help managers become more confident leaders. And I do that with no nonsense sense, if that makes any sense. Insubordination. It can really rile you up. It's like, ha! Huh, how dare you? You want to talk back to me? You don't want to do the job that you were hired for? Get out of here. You're fired. But we're better than that. We are going to figure out what we need to look for. And we're going to figure out what we as leaders need to do before we tell them to beat it. So as frustrating as this can be, I need you to look yourself in the mirror. When somebody is being insubordinate, have you been very clear with the ask, what it is that you want them to do. Are you certain that the staff member, the employee knows what you want them to do? And this particular staff member or team member, are they actually mentally, physically, skill wise, are they able to do the task that you're asking? Because these are things that we can, as leaders, we can easily overlook and be like, yeah, but they should know, should they? Should they? Did you teach them? Have they been trained? Is this part of the regular job duties that they, that they do on a daily? If not, maybe there was a gap in the understanding or the communication. So let's look at ourselves first. The next thing we're just gonna, we're not jumping down this guy or this girl's throat just yet. I want you to ask yourself, is it possible that the person didn't really understand what you were asking? Is it possible that they've got a lot on their plate and they genuinely just forgot? And then I want to ask you, is this insubordinate demeanor, this employee who's just being insubordinate, is this normal behavior from them? Are they usually easygoing? Are they usually somebody that gets the job done? Or are they usually mouthy? Do they usually push back on things? All of this will be helpful in how you deal with it. Because if somebody's not usually like that, then possibly they just forgot. Or possibly they really didn't understand the task. But listen, I'm not here to sugarcoat nothing. We all have worked with a couple people that are just jerks. They push back for the sake of pushing back. They are insubordinate because they think that that's their right. So if that's the person we're talking about, we know who it is. If that's the person, now we're getting into business. So let's not assume the worst because it's very easy to get into the John always has an issue. That's why he didn't do it. He's being insubordinate. Let's just not assume that. Let's look at all the things. What's John got on his desk? What's he working on? Is it possible that, have we put pressure on him? Has somebody else uh, put pressure on him in the office where there's something else that's more important? So we're not gonna assume the worst. The worst could be happening. It could be intentional, but let's be, take the high road and not go there just yet. The next thing that you need to do when dealing with an insubordinate employee is you need to bring it up when it's happening. I know a lot of managers, especially new managers, that will say, oh, I don't like that. That was insubordinate. But they don't do anything about it. They just put it in their book. Now, that's another step, but we'll get there. But they just put it in their book and they leave it. And then three months go by and John gets pulled in the office for being insubordinate. And you've got this artillery, this, this document that's ready for war because of all these things that have been insubordinate. And John has no idea where you're coming from. So if you find that somebody, this jerk John, is being insubordinate, deal with it then, now, here, wherever it takes place. Not in front of everybody. And if it can't be in that moment, make sure it's in that day. Try to get that conversation started so that we know as leaders, they know as teammates, employees, staff members, that we've got, we've got problems. We've got something we need to discuss and get to. Now, this one is very important, especially if you have one of those employees that just, they just know how to do, just dig in and hit those nerves. You need to stay cool. You lose the moment you start getting into a yelling match with an employee. You lose. All credibility is gone. They know that they've got you. You have to stay cool. You have to stay thoughtful. You need to be thinking of everything that's happening. And when you're on fire, when you're just yelling, you're not taking in 
the surrounding. You're not taking in what the person's actually saying. You're just offloading all your anger, all your frustrations, and you lost. We, as leaders that watch this channel, we don't lose. We play chess, we don't play checkers. Now listen, if you're anything like me, you just want the plain answers of how to lead a team, how to stop insubordination, how to level up without all the fluff, and you don't have time to read hundreds of books. You don't have time to go on weekend seminars to elevate yourself yet, but you need the information. You're not looking to become a psychology major. You're not looking to find everybody's why right now. You're barely keeping your head above water. And how can I say this with confidence? Because that was me. I did that. I struggled for years trying to figure out how to be a leader, how to be a boss. Like I'm a boss, but how to be a boss, how to be a leader for my team. I would have staff being insubordinate. I would have my peers being disrespectful, thinking that, I can't do the job when I know that I can, I just need the opportunity. And when you're in a workplace like that, where you know, you're striving, you're trying to do better as a leader, you got all these outside factors that you're not sure how to manage. It will make you feel sick. It will make you not want to go into work. It will make you so that you do not thrive in the role you've been provided, the role you've been given. I get that because that was me exactly until I understood the 14 foundational elements of management. And what I've done is I've put them into a very basic PDF because I don't want you wasting years trying to be the manager that you know you are. I don't want you wasting years not knowing how to lead your team. I don't want you to be disrespected. I don't want your team not to trust you. This is not how we can thrive as leaders. Now, all you have to do is go in the description and download my free PDF. It is the 14 foundational elements of management that I've figured out that work for me. And it's plain English. There's no fluff to it. It's just to the point. Now, you don't have to download it. It's okay if you're okay with the way your career is developing. You don't have to download it. But if you question whether you've got it all under control and there's something or there's something more that you could learn, download it now. Now, when we're talking about an insubordinate employee, I know I've told you we need to act on it right away. Part of that is we have to be taking notes because you and I know in the real world, you know when somebody's being a jerk. You know when somebody's doing things intentionally to make you look bad, to sabotage the project, just to be a thorn. Everything that happens, you need to document. Documentation will help you in the future as things escalate. If you can't get it up under wraps, the documentation, that's what HR needs. That's what your manager needs in order to squash this problem. Now, as you're talking with your employee one-on-one, -on -one, this is not a group discussion, but you're talking to your employee one-on-one -on -one, and you've asked them to do this job and they say, absolutely, or I'm not. Or they say, you know what? F you, I don't like you, I don't respect you. Again, we're keeping our cool, but we're gonna clarify exactly what you want. You're gonna need to make sure that the employee knows exactly what is acceptable. It is not acceptable for you to tell me to go fly a kite other words, but fly a kite for this video. It's not acceptable and it won't be tolerated. Or if it's a job that's, you know, I've delegated to you and you don't do it, it has to be done. It was delegated to you. This is the outcome, should it not be done. And we walk through the process. I worked with a team at the airport where we had to do cleaning in the morning of the airport baggage system. Nobody liked it. I didn't like it. I had to do it they had to do it. And when I became a manager, the first thing I did when I knew there was people that was where they weren't cleaning at all, I had to have a one on one discussion with them. And I this is this is basically fly on the wall. This is what I said. I don't like the cleaning. You don't like the cleaning. We understand it's not a likable part of the job. I understand that. But my responsibility is to have the system clean in the mornings. Your responsibility right now is to do the cleaning. So as I see it, this is our opportunity. If we have to come into the office again and have this discussion, it's going to be with a different outcome. Right now, I just wanna make sure that we're on the same page. I have to make sure that the staff is getting it done. You have to make sure that you're doing your part. We move on from there, everything is fine. If we don't, I have to wash my hands of it, whatever the outcome may be, and you know, based on the union agreement, 
how this discipline or how this ste these steps go, that's where we'll be. By saying it like that, I understand, I empathize. I don't like doing it, I get it. You don't like doing it either, but it has to be done. And I'm coming to you to share with you what the outcome is going to be next time. So when I talk to these people that are insubordinate, I'm not there to lecture them. I'm saying, listen, this is what has to be done. You don't like to do it. That's fine. I understand that. You don't like me. That's fine. I can understand that too. But this is my warning shot. This is my help a brother out kind of thing where this isn't a disciplinary discussion. It's an acknowledgement of what's happening or not happening and why we have to fix it and what the outcome is going to be based on your decisions, not my actions, not my decisions. And then here's what has to happen. And, and a lot of people don't want to get here and I don't either, but we have to have a disciplinary action taken. If the person is still being insubordinate, if they're still being disrespectful and totally ignoring the tasks that you've assigned, you have to do something. And based on the point before, you've had the conversation. You said, listen, if it gets to disciplinary action, it's no longer on me. I made it very clear. You understand we're good. So it's a decision that you made. And then don't worry, don't sweat about having to discipline somebody. This is way different than coming in the first time somebody screws up, you're like, ah, one day suspension. That's not what we're doing. We've worked through steps. We've talked to the person. We've made it very clear of what their actions or their words, what the consequences of those in that manner will be. So you as a leader don't have to worry about somebody getting suspended. You didn't do it. You gave them lots of opportunity to understand what the outcomes were going to be. And then you stood your ground. Now to me, when a leader stands their ground in a fair but firm manner, that's the leader that I give the most respect to because you told me what was gonna happen and this is what happened. And it was absolutely equal. Whether it be a discipline or a promotion or a bonus, a leader that, says, that shares the plan or the vision and stands by it is somebody that gets respect. If somebody's treating you in an insubordinate fashion, don't for a second think that the team's not watching. Don't think for a second that they're gonna say, well, if John's getting away with it, why do I have to do this? And at the same time, when they see that John is not getting away with it, they respect that from you because they just wanna come in and they wanna do their job. They wanna enjoy their day, get the job done, and move on with no problems. And everybody doing the fair amount of work. And that is what a leader does. Now, as leaders, we have the best of intentions, but there's three mistakes that you might still be making by accident. And that's what we discover in this video. So do yourself a favor, click the link, I'll get my coffee, and I'll see you in that video. Ciao.